online, ciao ragazzi. So this is the video with the answers to all the questions that you asked me. There were quite a few of them and yeah, some of them were well quite repeatable, but I wouldn't I'm not going to answer all of them. Okay, so just the ones which um, I suppose to be quite unique and interesting maybe in terms of uh, life in the UK and everything. So the video is um, two years in the UK <laughs> results, <laughs> something like this. Okay, and yeah, you finally can see the painting that's behind me and that's my actually working space. Where I'm working now online in Rome as I moved here. So yeah, so let's get going uh, with the questions. And yeah, the first thing to say is that, yeah, I've been to the UK for two years and um, it's been a great time. And um, I would definitely recommend, well, to be exact, okay, to be quite precise about the UK, I, I was in Scotland. Okay, so I don't know a lot about Wales, Northern Ireland, because I haven't been there at all. But I've been to um, England, I've been to London, I've been to Manchester, as everyone knows, according to my post, my great friend leaves. And I've been to Newcastle, which is in England as well. And just the Shire, you know, just the more or less um, uh, the great places around England. But um, I would say the majority of these two years, yes. And before that, as a do this, I spent in Scotland and all around the Shire as well. And I would say, and I always recommend to my students, like the moment you want to go to the UK, please consider Scotland first. <laughs> that they want. Don't be, you know, don't be victims of this marketologist, you know, and this targeting that they always post to you when they say, welcome to London. It's, well, I wouldn't say that, yeah, it's bad or dirty or... I don't know, whatever, expensive, yes, it is the stereotypical things, yes, it's true, but in terms of nature, in terms of, you know, great friendly people and the sites and the history that you would like lo to explore, please go to Scotland, <laughs> okay, anyway, <laughs> right, let's get going to the UK first, all right, so there were a few questions and um, before the uh, uh, jump into them, okay, well, I would like just to say a few things like ups and downs, you know, about the life there. So the first thing that I would say, of course, the positive first, because for teachers, yes, positive feedback first, and then like a sandwich compliment, you go with negatives, right? And so the first um, advantage, yes, is amazing nature. And nevertheless, yes, yeah, so yeah, the climate, rain, storms, actually my very first storms in my life, I think I, I haven't counted there. And I think it was the northern part, Aberdeen, we were leaving and there was an incredibly, <laughs> incredibly awful because I think uh, all winter, yes, yeah, so every month there was a storm, like a real storm, okay? You can imagine, yes, yeah, so hail, rain, wind, blowing rubbish away, you know, just like, I don't know what it was, you know, knocking at my window, you know, every single time and it was total darkness. It was so scary. So these are the amazing storms that you can encounter. But again, nevertheless, please don't be, you know, somehow taken aback by that. Yes, yeah, so please don't be put off by it because it's an incredible place. And um, thanks to that, actually, because of all these storms and lots of rain every time, the nature is just splendid. The North Sea, and you remember my pause, yes, I would say it's the best place to visit and you can be really jealous um, because there are lots of villages, you know, as they call them towns, right, uh, just next to the seaside. And imagine how lucky people are seeing the sea every day from their window, right? It's just incredible feeling, I guess. Um, yeah, so that's the first thing. I would say nature and I would say climbing to the advantage rather than the, the disadvantage, all right? So then the second uh, positive thing about it, I would say, of course, yes, as in a person who st still studies English, yes, I think there's this is ongoing process. Um, everyone speaks English, so you can, you know, very quickly adapt and get used to it and pick up, you know, the language, slang and things around. Yes, and I'm so grateful that I found amazing people, amazing staff where I was working with. It was in language school in Lingua and now they are my great friends and I'm totally grateful to them, you know, absolutely for giving me this chance working with them and having this opportunity to meet so many nationalities, so many amazing people from all over the world. And you know, the best again recommendation to me, there will be a lot of them, I guess, will be please people travel. I know it's hard. I know it gets, you need money for it and things. Well, at least take your chance, okay? Rather than, rather than you know, I don't know, 
buying a new dress or well okay, not a dress a car right please go and travel somewhere okay because you will get a lot more emotions a lot more let's say uh, you know life experience you'll change your attitude you'll change your mindset seriously believe me and i've got friends from all over the world if i say from all over the world it's true okay i've got amazing friends i found from saudi arabia i've never thought that i will get you know friends from these arabic countries but they're the best people that you can find um i've got friends from ukraine i've got friends from kazakhstan i've got friends from sweden i mean germany okay europe of course goes without saying um canada yes and so on and so forth and these people are everywhere it's just we are all the same seriously and never judge people by a you know background of nationality or things and that's the best thing because scotland and yeah actually most of more, more or less all the uk it's a concentration that's like epicenter of all the world and you can find everyone from wherever you go right so all the planet is there and that's a great thing um I would say that, yeah, of course, you know, on the, this is the bright side. On the other hand, yeah, surely there are, you know, many things that you don't like, like prices, yes. It's incredibly difficult to find a flat there. And actually, there was one of the questions, uh, like, is it easy to find a flat? And uh, what's the queue, if there is a queue? Yes, yeah, so, yeah, it's an extremely uh, difficult and complicated process. If you try to find a travel, oh, sorry, travel, um, the estate agency, yes, yeah, so if you find it, um, well, if you find a flat through them, so that's going to take, not ages, yes, but it will take months to get through. Why? Because firstly, they will require lots of documents that you need to prove who you are, what you are, really, how much money you've got, you know, in your pockets and bank account, if you have a stable job or not, yes, if you're an immigrant or not, so you know what I mean, right? So on the other hand, yeah, so yeah, it's like a epicenter of all nationalities, everyone is super friendly and amazing, but <laughs> yeah, that's the thing that UK is famous for, and yeah, they judge you. <laughs> You need, they, you will need to, you will need to look fine <laughs> yes and of course they will spot uh, you know immediately who is worth what <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> but that's true so but definitely no matter what if you are with positive attitude if you are ready for it yes you are ready to handle to tackle no matter what problems you'll do it. Nothing is impossible, believe me. Look at me in my life. <laughs> right. Anyway, um, it's quite difficult to find a flat. Um, like, I do remember, like, when we were looking, um, if this city is small, like Aberdeen we used to live in, it's not, goes without saying, it's like, yeah, everything is on sale there because practically lots of people move to England, yes, unfortunately, because the city is kind of run down nowadays, so sorry to say, but I mean, it's amazing anyway, uh, no matter what, and great university there and things so on and so forth. Um, but to tell the truth, like when you, we went to Edinburgh, that's the capital, right? Um, even though Glasgow is much bigger and more uh, populated, but nevertheless. Um, so there in Edinburgh, uh, I think we were looking at about like 10 flats, different ones, to travel, uh, why I always try to call them travel agencies, through, through estate agencies, yeah, so maybe I want to travel again, <laughs> right, through also through um, the private, uh, ten, uh, private uh, landlords as well, right, um, so I would say private, quite more loyal, more tolerant to everyone, yes, um, but still the queue is huge and you need to kind of every 10 minutes so you arrive at the viewing right and you have like a queue of 10 couples in front of you every 10 minutes they have a viewing right and it is some kind of you know auction like who's got more for deposit <laughs> right so if you can pa uh, pay today for example six months in advance that's yours right if you have only two months in the past <laughs> loser right so something like this but yeah if you're lucky enough right so I mean, you need to try, you need to go on, yes, you need to get, go again. And so it took us, I guess, I think half a month, yes, yeah, so trying to find a flat, more or less every single day, imagine. And yeah, the flats are nice, yeah, but if, well, minimum, I would say, well, don't forget that in, uh, in Scotland, I'm not sure about England and other um, countries in the UK, in Scotland, you 
do not just pay the uh, rental payment. You have all the council tax, you have, uh, you have all the bills for gas, for electricity, for heating and all this type of extra. So that's why you always need to consider like if you can afford it or not. Right, that's the flat thing, okay? I don't want to be negative, you know, you know me, <laughs> I'm quite a positive person. So I want to make it, you know, happy, <laughs> so something that's not so bad, please. <laughs> so, my wonderful good friend, uh, Dasha, who I love so much, my friend from Petersburg, and know she was quite, I know, I know. Um, so, what's the weather in the UK, I guess, now, and how does it feel? So, you remember the story of storms. <laughs> I remember, like, maybe you remember there was also a video, yeah, Yana Blah Blah is a lot, you know, um, and there was a funny video uh, when Yana decided to get to the North Sea when it was storm, <laughs> so I remember myself, you know, grabbing this metal bars and trying to turn, that was so difficult because I couldn't because of the wind, <laughs> It was a very funny experience, yes, but I did it, come on, I did it, yes, I didn't fly away to Kansas, whatever, so all was good, right? So, the weather is amazing, it's mostly rainy, it's true, but this one day of sunshine, um, okay, once what, once a week, uh, once in two weeks, yeah, so that can be like cloudless sunshine, okay, but every day there is, there are clouds, like every day, and the wind is every day it's again it's scotland okay so i can say about this part and uh, but it's still warm like aberdeen is much cooler and much chillier i would say if you compare to edinburgh like when i was visiting nest every time in manchester it was like, <laughs> so hot oh my god yeah england with their what was that like plus 10 yes it was like pfft sauna for me seriously but uh in the meantime in uh, scotland it was like plus five <laughs> so yeah but it's comfortable it's comfortable for traveling so you will often go to the museums because of the rain right right okay so that's the answer uh anyway um let me go next oh yes uh so julie was asking about the house prices um so yeah back to the flats um i would say that the mortgage is White, yes, possible to take, but I would say that mortgage, I think it's mostly for, yeah, again, you need to prove um, lots of things. We haven't tried it, um, but I think we are going to try it in Italy, and I'll tell you about Italy <laughs> later. Later, don't worry, it's not now. Um, yeah, um, but I would say uh, there, like, lots of programs, especially for like young families and things, they're the same as back home, and... I would say, yeah, people go, people do. The prices are approximately, yeah, so for the rent, if you ask me again, Edinburgh is like a thousand pounds minimum. Don't forget, council tax plus, bills plus, all plus, okay? Don't forget about that. It's just without it, <laughs> right? And don't forget deposit, okay? Um, yeah, and usually in the UK, it was like two months deposit. So here, for example, we've encountered more, well, it depends, I guess, on people, anyway. So, yeah, but you can take a mortgage, it's not a problem, but, yeah, we haven't thought about, so I don't know a lot of details, unfortunately, about that. Um, the next question was, um, yeah, so, um, one of my friends, so, as I've said, I was volunteering there, and I've encountered so many great people. I was working with Ukrainian refugees, and um, I've had also hairdressers and manicurists there from Ukraine, and they are my amazing friends. I love them so much. And then I went to our Russian speaking school, and I've encountered them more people, yes, yeah, speaking the same language. And oh my God, who cares about politics? So the most important is the people. The people are amazing, and you know this is me as usual. You know optimist with the peaceful thoughts oh my god this is incredible please um, nobody ever said anything everyone is so nice and friendly no one cares about anything just as long as you are you know not the um, aggressive one of course and um, as for the differences i would say you will be laughing i haven't had culture shocks I do not remember anything like, you know, specific. I do remember like having some food to try first time, like Marmite. <laughs> that was a cool thing. I like it actually. Yeah, I'm the person who is for. <laughs> right. I wouldn't say that, you know, like there was something that kind of shocked me. Well, a style, maybe fashion a bit. Yeah. So, but now I can see the differences in, I can compare Italy and Scotland, for example. I think England's too. And I would say that, 
the fashion that people what they wear is yes, outside like here they do care about it like you should look well even you are tourists even you're in trainers but they should be nice trainers and then in scotland yes so we have leggings yes no matter what size you are then you have like the most the dirtiest traders ever yeah you have a hoodie on top of you you go that's it <laughs> that's how they look there <laughs> so yeah that was a bit of a maybe a small culture shock let me put it this way for me when i was there because yeah it was fun it was fun to see people you know wearing some nonsense colors <laughs> Yeah, mostly total grey and total darkness. People are very, um, I would say people are quite down in the face every time. I wouldn't say they're smiling everywhere. I think I was the smiling one. <laughs> and yeah, even at work, yeah. So the pessimists are everywhere. Optimists are everywhere, yeah. So don't judge really by the country. But maybe because of the weather, because it's also so cold there. So I guess we Siberian people, right? So <laughs> we can do the same. I don't know. I don't know. I think that people change when they move. Uh, anyway, I became a lot more optimistic. I think so. You know, looking at them being down every day. And I was like, come on, guys. What a lovely weather. Plus five rain. Cool. That's me. Um, anyway, yeah. Um, the difference in style, the difference in architecture, yes, goes without saying. Difference in history, which I was overwhelmed by. And this is actually a good thing. You know, I love history. Um, people who know me know, th know that. Um, and this is a great thing. Um, in Scotland, there were so many castles and uh, these historical spots. Yeah, so these landmarks that you need just to dig in and excavate yourself, you know. And uh, of course, I'm looking forward to exploring Italy the same way. Um, but it will different history, of course. Um, so I found and you saw the photos, like great places where battles took place and things like that. And that was all in... Uh, Scotland and I do recommend strongly to get to the north to see the lake, the nature. So these are like the, the top things, yes, um, that you can find there. And um, yeah, goes without saying about people and things. Um, I wouldn't say well that there were some you know problems with um, like the, in the, the family terms. You know, I wouldn't say. Um, I would I would say British people are. Well, the ones that I met, okay, <laughs> they were very hospitable, uh, very welcoming, very inviting, and everyone didn't worry about anything like your background or whatever. No prejudices at all. So, yeah, it was incredibly great. Right, let me um, jump very quickly to more questions. Um, I do remember uh, there were a few other ones. And yes, um, this is the thing that Jana has changed your phone into a talent. I'm studying a talent, so I need to... <laughs> All right, that was one more thing. Yes, is it difficult to get a job uh, without British or European dedication? Um, right, I'm a teacher, you know that. I'm a teacher of English and I have had international certificates like Celta and Delta. And for me, it was easy as long as I had my permit there. Without permit, I would never get this job. The same for Europe. Let me put it this way. If you do not have work or study permit in any of the European or UK countries or America, whatever, I don't think you can get a job without it. You can, um, or if you have work visa, definitely, obviously you can get it because you have already a work, yes, that was offered to you. Um, so let me put it this way, um, even if you have amazing diploma somewhere from Moscow Economic School or something, if you are looking for a job abroad, so I would say there are three ways, as I've been always told, um, find a work, find work, I mean like an employer, and then he will provide you with work visa like sponsorship. Find amazing uh, wife or man of your life, Mr. Right, Mrs. Right, yes, and um, moving like this, or studying, being a student, paying money for the university. It's never been my aim, and um, it's just happened like this in my life. Um, that's why I didn't have any, you know, problems getting a visa or getting, uh, you know, work and things like that. So, but yeah, all the people who I know, they mostly moved because of work. Yes, and they got a job first, 
back home, then they move to a work visa, like to Cyprus. I know people, um, not one even, like to Ireland, like to Canada, Australia, and so on. Turkey, Georgia. Um, other people, they went to study, like to the UK, for example. And of course, some of the friends who I know, they moved because they got married. But again, it's not like, you know, you do it on purpose because of life, right? It happened this way. So I would say, yes, you can try. Um, I know that for the UK, for example, there is even a list of um, employers in their government website where you can find and connect to them. Yes, uh, somehow, you know, to find if they can sponsor you to move. And I know it happens too. So, yeah, this is the story. Anyway, sorry about that. 20 minutes as usual. You know, Jan is a blah, blah person, right? And um, I hope I have answered most of the questions. Yes, and hope it was interesting. And yeah, you won't skip a lot. I'll try to um, tell you more and uh, talk about my way here in Italy. And yeah, here we go. Looking forward to it. Okay, keep in touch. See ya. Ciao.